choice. <laughs> well, I usually pick one of the quieter people um, because, again, this records audio as well. So if we capture EVPs through this video, um, and we know it's not going to be his voice because the dude hasn't said much besides his own damn name. <laughs> um, so um, you're going to take this camera and point it directly at me, and we're going to wait for this car to pass. So before I actually step out into the streets, I do the demo for it. Passing, passing, perfect. All right, go ahead and point it directly at me, just like a YouTuber, so everybody can see it. There you go. So you should be able to see me oh. in there. Oh, yeah, see? I got your yeah. attention now, didn't I? Um, so he's like, I've seen his eyes plug out. Um, so this is an SLS camera. So if you watch the TV shows, you've probably seen this in the big, giant, chunky monkey, all wires everywhere. We're using an Xbox 360 uh, camera because that's the way it spreads out. Um, we found that the Apple LiDAR technology works just as well, and it's portable. So it makes the bag a whole lot lighter because, again, I'm not going to carry around a 30-pound camera. Um, the whole point of this is that it's a depth perception camera. So a little gist on how it works. It's going to pick up trees, somebody lurking in the darkness. Obviously, it picked up me. Think of it as kind of like a Snapchat filter. Um, so in the event that you see something on there, I'm looking for a couple of things. Point it at me again, just for a second. Are the three points for my head? Mm -hmm. I have two eyes and a nose. Yeah. That's the depths of my face. That's kind of like the first thing I look for when I find something that I can't identify in the video. Um, so if it doesn't have three points, I just keep rolling because it's probably a tree or the contour of a car or something along those lines. Yeah. There's a lot of debunking with this camera. Um, when I do that and I'm spot checking it, I do watch it in double time. So that way it's easier to spot something. And secondly, if I find something and I can't identify it, I always take a screenshot and brighten it to see what's behind that figure to make sure it's not a tree, Jason in darkness, so forth and so on. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of debunking. It is very cool. Um, so have I found things with this? I have. I've had it for probably eight or nine months now. We probably have, we'll just say count on two hands, like legitimate, I'll put my stamp of approval, like we had a legitimate ghost with us and got interaction. So a lot of times if you're unsure about something, ask whoever the ghost is that we're trying to hunt down if they can raise their right hand. Like mm -hmm. be very specific with it. Yeah. So again, you can say it out loud, you can just focus on it. It's okay. Some people just are uncomfortable talking to people they can't see. So that's okay too. Let's get mom squared away. She's super stoked. You're gonna be my spirit box person. Okay. Yeah, my allergies. There's something in there blowing around. I was just oh. watching Haunted Ireland before we got here. Is <laughs> it all this stuff? The spirit boxes, if you're unfamiliar with it, which obviously they might be. Um, this is a, basically a, a radio sweeper. So on your TV shows, this is basically the white noise, and then your TV host will put up in the middle of the screen the bullshit he thinks he heard, trying mm -hmm. to convince you of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna be doing that in real time. However, finding one of those disembodied voices is a rarity. So I only get maybe, we'll just say, six to 10 of those per year, not 12 an episode, just so you have that idea. So what we do with these on my tours, and I don't like calling these tours, by the way, is we're gonna use beginner methods. Because basically I want you to think of this as kind of like a teaching train on ghost hunting, but with real history. Um, so with that, we're gonna slow this down. We're gonna actually use the, the radio chatter to hopefully get communication. Okay. That means you're gonna hear song lyrics, DJs, commercials. Tell me what they say. Okay. It might be a 50-50 shot. I could tie it to our location, a ghost we're hunting down, or a ghost you guys brought with you. Okay. It happens all the time. I'll tell you, two weeks ago, did you bring something with you tonight? What? He's notorious for picking up things and taking it to places. <laughs> two weeks ago, I had this woman crying the entire tour because she was getting connections with her mother. I mean, and they weren't like, it said mom. It was like, it said mom's birthday. It said her son's name. Um, all of these things that they were very, very like spot on. So again, it was, it was very interesting how this actually would come through. I'm gonna be writing down what I feel is relevant to our spaces throughout the night. I do keep a notepad with me to keep notes um, so that way I can put it in your report. But this is recording, just the session. So it's not gonna record us. It's gonna record whatever you're just hearing. whatever it picks up. And you're going the wrong way. Can't wait for them to get a ticket. It's a one way street. So, There's a Pittsburgh. lot of one ways down here. Yeah, a lot. Um, so it's not as bad as Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah. We've ever been up that way. Pittsburgh. Is there a trim really. LED in that car? Yeah. Yeah. So Sorry, bad. I got in laws up in Pennsylvania, so we're up. I want to get that. Um, but anyway, so my truck. You can mess with the volume. It doesn't re like mess with the volume on the recording. So a lot, a lot more of people will turn it down when I'm going over the history and then crank it up it when we're kind of investigating that space. Yeah. Um, the only thing you need to worry about is the volume. Yeah. It's a wheel. It's right here. Okay. We're turning it all the way down just to make sure you don't get blasted in the ear. Okay. Headphones for you. You're going to be the only one to hear it in real time. Awesome. Welcome aboard. You've been trained. You got a job later. <coughs> for dad, let's make it scientific because he's going to need some kind of proof. Do you guys use those millimeters, the little blinky lights? Yeah. Or you guys use this guy? We use the blinky that one. Yeah. I don't use the blinky light one all the I time. I didn't love the blinky that one. Here's why. 
I use them on TV and on their stores. First off, they're very inexpensive compared to everything else I have inside the bag. Um, and they don't go very high and they don't go high enough for the spaces that we are going tonight. Um, so I usually, if I have a little guy in the tour, I give that to him because that way the little blinky lights keep him occupied and all he has to do is tell me what color he saw and I already have it memorized so I can write it down. Um, we're gonna be using a millimeter instead. Millimeter is gonna be digital and it goes eight times higher than the blinky light one that you guys used before. Um, the bottom is ambient temperature. If we were using my FLIR, my thermal imaging camera, that would be handy to kind of see like if somebody caught something in camera, you and I would be able to go debunk it um, in real time. Um, so I wanna know anything 2.5 and higher on the big numbers, that's the top ones. Um, so the reason why is because I, the blinky light one, the first indication that something might be nearby is 2.5. You and I will debunk a lot of things. We'll kind of make sure you're not near an electrical pole, parking meter, so forth. Um, so that's gonna be, what your job's gonna be. Last but not least, I'm gonna run a word generator. I'm actually gonna run something. So, word generator, I always like to have at least two points of communication to kind of verify like what's going on with you. On the TV shows, they use what they call an obelisk. I don't use the obelisk because, first off, it's only got 2,000 terms in it. We have over 170,000 words in our English language. Why only give me 2,000 for $700? That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and they're all pre-programmed to be spooky terms. Yeah, that's kind of the way they're designed. I don't like to use those. I actually use a word generator. It's an app and it has over 9,000 terms in it and they're not all spooky terms. So you guys will get the full word list that comes up um, and it does bring us with timestamps so we know exactly where we are to see if it matches up with what you actually have. Awesome. Um, so this is about 20% accurate, which you're using is about 50%. Accurate. Okay. Um, so we're going to clear out the last tour that used this. They had over 100 terms show up. Um, that's actually pretty excessive. We normally get about 75 to 100. Um, so again, just keep in mind, only about eight to 12 of those terms are gonna be accurate to our spaces, but I do just give- just said identify. <laughs> <laughs> but I do give you the full word list back because something might resonate with one of y'all, if that makes sense. So I'll kind of keep this guy happy. No, I'm not rating the app right now. So <laughs> like to keep that kind of separated. I normally would run my own phone on it, but my phone didn't fully charge on the way down here, which was super surprising. <laughs> All right, so go have fun. Let me know what happens. You're in charge of it. Cool. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> There's a reason why we start here. Of course there is. The place is haunted. Big John's. So, oh, yeah, that's why we start here. Um, but this, I've been coming at this location for four years. I, and for the duration that I'm in Charleston, I will probably always start right here because it's the perfect example to start off what we're about to go through. Big John was a football player. He played for the 1947 New York Giants. Yeah. Whenever I give you the history of a space, are you a sports nut? Yeah. Good, because I'm not. Big on football. I had to memorize this shit so I could tell people like you and look like <laughs> I know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, so again, I'm going to slow down on keywords that are commonly found in those areas. And I, I do pretty well with it. But keywords here, just as an example, would be 47, New York, Giants, anything relative to a bar and the name John. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna do that for like the first one or two stops, but after that, you're gonna have to pick them up on your own. Okay. Um, so uh, based on the history that I'm giving you. Um, so anyway, John used to sit in the back of the bar and he would tell the bartender if the cadets coming over from the Citadel were old enough to drink or not as they came in. One night, two guys came in, they were not old enough to drink. John got pissed and told the bartender to throw them out. Love being next to a bar. You gotta see it on a Friday and Saturday night. Oh, bad. Yeah, it's bad. Um, it gets really bad. Like I try to like rush this corner because it gets so loud over here. Yeah. Anyway, back to Big John. So those two cadets left, pissed off. They came back the next night and they tried to steal the cash register from the front of the bar. John saw what was going on from the back. He comes up front and starts beating the hell out of these guys. A couple of gunshots go off. John got grazed in the neck, but the bullet goes behind him into the wall. He's the only one who got shot. He's the only one who got up. Goes back to the bar, tells the bartender, give me another beer, go get those two guys an ambulance. Irony of the story, nobody died. If I tell you a building is haunted, you're already preconditioned to think that some kind of tragedy happened here. It's not the case, it's the bullet hole. It's allegedly still here. Even if this renovation of Big John's filled in that bullet hole, that means Big John's blood is still here, sealed inside the building. So people that sit in the front of the bar tend to get a little queasy, nauseous, or headache. That's why we start here. It's a heated morning to three strangers that I'm about to take on a ghost hunt. You guys feel those symptoms? Let me know, we'll blame the weather first. Again, you've already said it's a little weird out here. Um, so <laughs> I'm not a guy where everything's gonna be a ghost, so just don't get that in your brain right now. Um, I'm not gonna be the first guy to debunk whatever you guys are finding first, so keep that in mind as well. But we'll get out of that area and then assess it from there. Is that fair to everybody? Mm -hmm. I figured as much. Let's get your mind off your own health because that's probably the scariest shit I'm gonna tell you all night. Um, usually when it deals with like, oh my God, I might actually get ill from this. Yes, it's a possibility. Um, we had a big earthquake here in 1886. Have you guys been taking other tours around Charleston? No. Mm -hmm. oh, it's our first here. one. Okay, perfect. So I'm usually the first thing you do or the last thing you do. So I'm never like that middle thing. They want the last hurrah or they can't wait to get down here to come go something. But anyway, 
the big earthquake. It's a big deal. You're going to hear about it all over town. Um, simply because here in South Carolina, we're not supposed to get earthquakes, we get hurricanes. So this building, Big John's, is allegedly where the first death occurred from the earthquake. They say the white mantle, piece of it broke off from the front of the building, hit somebody in the back of the head, killed them. The previous owner of this bar used to see dark shadows in the middle of East Bay Street after closing. I said allegedly with that one because I don't have any proof. It's just a great segue so nobody thinks about getting sick on the tour. And I do it every single night, even though I bring it back up again. Ready to learn more about your gear? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's grab the, go up this way. Both of us have been hacking crap up for weeks. So. How bad was that rain down here yesterday? It was oh, like it was all bad. day and all night. Like how flooded was it? I watched some videos today. On the market, up to at the, the market, it was up to their up to thighs. Their thighs. So a little history on that road right there. Ooh. That actually. Uh, right that's there. All man-made. Uh, three dots too. It's picking up. I think. It was Electric. three dots a second ago. Electric pole? Anything with branches or leaves is not your friend. Yeah. So, okay. If, I mean, right you're there. recording right now, so. See? Like I three see. dots right there. But a ghost is not going to be that tall. See how it's picking oh. up the top of the building? Is it? Yep. Oh. W. I can't really see. It's okay. You'll get it. Yeah. Figure it you can out. Go ahead. Actually, I don't know why I hit the record button on that. You can actually stop it because we're going to do so as a group. If we want to separate, that's fine too. Um, but as far as the EMF goes, this is going to give us some pretty substantial readings. Um, we normally get an average of 18 to 22, but we have seen it go into triple digits um, multiple times. Uh, Her name's Eliza. Eliza. Okay. So let's, uh, let's kind of take one or two laps around here and kind of see what we got going on. I'm going to check my word list as we kind of do that. So I'm not like going up and down, up and down with you. So that's going to be your new baseline. So don't get anything below that five. When we go higher than that, that'll be the new baseline. Okay. And I'm kind of figuring out like what's like it was showing that window over there as a person, but now I'm kind of figuring out. Yeah. Even move. that slight little windowsill around it is going to give it a little bit of contour. Yeah. But I figured if it like doesn't have legs and it's up there, then it's it's going to be the. Well, I've seen things where we've had reactions, like moving their arms, where there were no legs involved. Like, they yeah. weren't even in the video, and we were asking, hey, hey, can you move your left arm? Yeah. You know, can you move it up or down? That kind of thing, based on whatever the movement was. And we've gotten it. Mm -hmm. So, it could just be that there's not a full manifestation. We have half a body. Let's work with the half that we have. So... I was kind of noticing, like you said, whenever we were over by the... Uh the Big John bar thing. I kind of ha started to have a headache now, I don't anymore. But, you know, let's blame it on the weather. Yep. Well, we got your blood moving again. Yeah. And that's part of the reason why I like to brush a little bit of the history when we're out here in the cold and let you guys explore a little bit more because it keeps us warm. I've been doing this long enough now to where I can pretty much judge everything. Any other crazy numbers? Yeah. Pretty much zeros other than over there. Oh, you went back down to zero after that, didn't it? Like a five yeah, down to zero? It's around one and a half. Up to 1.1 is maximum. Oh, cool. Well, what have you got? Uh, Robinson, St. Mary's, something about bread. to get some. What's the temperature like where you guys back home? I like it. Hot. Is it? Yeah. And deep south. 
this is this is cold for us. Like yeah, we cold. we live in Central Texas, so okay. it's like it's hot usually all year round. But up in until North January, until January, January. Are only really cold months, so yeah, it's hot. it gets down and to it like thirty for about spring. half a month or a couple weeks, and then uh, way back up there. We'll, we'll get colder than this. Yeah, Six point five right over there. Okay. So right around the same area that you had your five. Yeah, pretty close. Still sitting around three eight four one nine eight four nine. Come on, Eliza. Those are weird. Come on. Five point seven. Are you on the record button too, little? Yeah, I am. Figured you knew how to use an iPad. I'd hope so. Actually, I don't. That is the only Apple product that I own, and it took everything in me to buy it. <laughs> I hear you. I am an Android. I am too. PC guy through and through. I actually had my daughter show me how to use that damn thing because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I don't do it. And even like if something goes awry, like I'm like, all right, who's an Apple user? Like, they all are. I'm not. I'm the only Android in the family. There's usually somebody in my group that's an Apple user. Yeah, he's the only one. He's the only one. Give yeah. mom another minute or two on that and kind of see where we're standing. It's pretty light in here tonight. Um, like I said, we normally will get an average of between 18 and 22, and I'll explain those readings before we leave. But yeah, branches and leaves, all because leaves are all in front of each, in front of each other, that's why they're never your friend. It's always yeah. going to pick up those kind of things, especially oh, when it's, it's in the dark. It's like uh, spreading out a lot. So. It's kind of hard whenever it's real dark. It's not really showing anything. Yeah, but when it's like, does pop up, what do you got now? A bunch of random, like what? Nothing you can, anything you can make out. I can't really make out. There was like some stuff about scripture and like little snippets of Bible channels. Oh, you're in South Carolina, in the Holy City. Yeah. So we're gonna get those things. We normally don't start to hear those things until we get closer to St. Philip's Church because that's our tallest steeple, and then it like to like super prominent so i hate to say like expect that i won't be writing them down because it's just a usual 40 is not the age when she died is it no have you heard the number 40 no yeah. that's what, what popped into my head oh i also told you that if you get the number 40 and i get the word art that's art fair plot from big john's team was number 40. oh you're kind of proving my point so um <laughs> that was of... just like when we walked over here it was like 40 40 Right Sometimes, person. like, they used to laugh at me, like, when I took a Reiki class, like, somebody's right knee would hurt, and my left knee would hurt. Like, everything was opposite. opposite. So they called me the dyslexic healer. <laughs> you still practice that Reiki? Not much. Like, I don't know, work for myself, but I don't do it. I got you. Understood. Let's cover the answers. Go ahead and hit stop on your camera. Let's kind of give your Philadelphia alley. So I was kind of writing down what might be. I like the number 74 for some reason. I don't know why. Um, doesn't really make sense to me in this location, but maybe I'll find something. This is where I get excited is where something like they say that I'm like, I have no idea what the hell that means. I'm going to write it down so I can research yeah. it. That's where I actually get excited instead That's of cool. just drop blanking stuff all the time. Also said something about taxes. On your video, um, when we're watching this, when I'm watching it, I'm only looking straight down the middle. I'm basically looking for a figure. There's a this lot of foliage fun. in here. Um, so again, even if somebody's going to come through here, because this is a popular ghost tour stop, they're going to come out of that wall, or they're going to come in the same way we did. You're basically going to grab the top handle and hold it like a suitcase. Okay. So that way we can still get the footage. They just don't know you're recording. It's another reason why I handed the teenager. There was something flashed on the top. It's going to pick it's up the up building right there all the time. So Yeah, I'm just looking stuff. straight down the alleyway. Yeah, yep. Just looking for yeah, a person way back at us. Um, so this is the space that I'm actually looking to take out this year um, or maybe intermittently come in here because every ghost store comes down here. Um, again, I don't Tomorrow like Tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. <laughs> that actually makes sense. That's going to make a whole lot more sense here. Okay. In so not the date, but the tomorrow morning, that, that actually makes sense. Um, this used to be called Duelers Alley. So this is where some of the duels used to occur for the city of Charleston. Tomorrow morning? <laughs> Tomorrow morning. We're going to meet at 8 a.m. Oh. It's kind of like what I got out of that. At sunrise. Exactly. Um, so we all tell the same story of the same duel because we can actually prove it. However, I'm going to give you a few more extra details. I'll be quick with them just because you're ghost hunting. You're not a campfire marshmallow kind of ghost tour, right? So let's kind of go through this. We're going to stir the shit up and then go across the street. And I'll tell you that crazy history. And you're going to get answers from both locations. Um, so 
doctor moves down here from Rhode Island. His name is Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd. If you hear the song Brown Eyed Girl while we're here, it's not coincidence. We get it all the time because it's part of his name. Okay. Joseph Brown Ladd. Um, but anyway, he moves down here because he's supposed to get married to his fiance, Amanda. Amanda just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents. She has an attorney helping her out with all of the cash. He thinks that Dr. Ladd is just after Amanda's money. He tells Amanda, get rid of the dog. So he comes down here to Charleston to prove that he's not after her money. He's going to start his medical practice down here in Charleston because this is the place to be. All right, so he comes down here and the coachman that brought him into town set him up to be robbed and killed. It's like having a really bad Uber driver. Um, so somebody was walking by and seeing what was about to happen. His name was Ralph Isaacs. I stop on Ralph because he has the same initials as where the doctor came from, R.I. Rhode Island, Ralph Isaacs. So we are getting the letters R.I. all the time on regular spirit boxes. I bought a new device. It acts just like a Ouija board, but in digital format. So we wanted to see if we were gonna get the letters R.I. So I've had that for about eight or nine months, and we've had it about half a dozen times whenever I bring up Ralph. So it makes sense in that consecutive order. Anyway, back to Ralph. He tells the doctor, dude, I know this guy. He's gonna to try to kill you. Come with me. We're gonna to go to 59 Church Street. You're gonna rent a room from friends of mine. You'll be safe and good to go. The doc took him up on the offer. The two became friends. The longer the doctor stays here, the more money he's making. He's proving his point. He's not after Amanda's money. She gets wind of this, she's moving down, so that way they can get married. And Dr. Ladd became known as the Whistling Doctor. This is another reason why I'm taking this out, is because I hate cliches. Every haunted city you're ever gonna visit is gonna have a cliche whistling ghost. Ours just happens to be a doctor. However, we get a lot from him. I'm gonna to get to that. Dr. Ladd and Ralph go see plays together. They can't sit next to each other because the doctor makes more money at this point. That's the hierarchy of Charleston. He gets better seats. So they talk about these plays on the way home. They go see Richard III one night from Shakespeare, and they're arguing over the actress that they just saw that was visiting. Dr. Ladd thought she was great. Ralph didn't. The argument turns into Ralph insulting the doctor's fiance, Amanda, back home in Rhode Island, and it got really ugly. They go their separate ways, and they're pretty pissed off. Ralph has friends around town. He goes to his friends at the newspaper and puts an ad in the paper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. Kind of a, you're a disgrace to society kind of bullshit. Doc saw the ad, but rebuttaled with, let's go to Dueler's Alley tomorrow at 8 a.m. Um, so they came down here, they took their 10 paces away from each other, they turned, the doc points his gun in the air, he shoots. He did not want to kill his friend. He just wanted to have the courage to show up, which that's often what happened at a duel. But Ralph he still has his one bullet in his flintlock and he puts it in the kneecap on the doctor. The doc didn't die, but Ralph proved his point. He's pissed off still. The doc fell to the ground, his friends picked him up, took him home to 59 Church Street, where he dies 10 days later on November 2nd of 1786 after refusing medical treatment. I'm gonna point out two things. It's 1786. Gunshot wounds are a lot different back then than what they are now. Secondly, he's a doctor. He you probably just said he had lead poisoning. Himself. Yeah, he probably just bled it out. So he failed because he died. And every ghost tour that comes down here tells you to listen for the whistles. We have two recordings going on right now. My voice recorder and his camera audio. So if we're gonna get a whistle, it's probably gonna show up on one of these two electronics. The other piece that we get all the time, more than I can ever count, is we'll get a whistling part of a song and then the word doctor from a commercial. I just got, doctor. you know that sound that Mariah Carey makes when she does the really, really high pitch? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just I'm still now, like as soon as you were saying it, that it made that noise. So I would. I, it wasn't quite a whistle, but it was pretty damn close. With, that, with a singing like note, when I she's would, saying it's time. Yeah, I would want the doctor to be exactly immediately after to kind of verify what's actually going on. Um, so, but there are a lot of whistling parts of songs. There's a lot down. Um, so, but with the doctor, <coughs> I can't tell you how many times we've gotten The number fifty nine shows up all the time. I mean, are there's a lot of clues in the story that hopefully we're going to get relevant over to the next location as well. Um, but if you're going to try this on your own and you're going to use your voice recorders from your phones and walk all the way through the alley, I can't take you all the way down because I've actually been kicked out of here. We're going to talk about that because that's the fun part of the story. Um, but just remember that every local knows the story. Anybody walking up and down Cumberland or Queen Street, we all throw a whistle down the alley. I used to do it every single night when my garage was down this way. So 3 o'clock in the morning when I'm done with your data, I'm walking by the alley, I always throw a whistle down here. Ever since I got thrown out. Let's get into that. Like, oh, who is this guy that dad signed us up with? <laughs> so this alley didn't go all the way through the way we came in. So there was a wall about halfway between us and Cumberland Street. The reason why is because this used to be called Cow Alley before it was the dueling alley. So Cow Alley meant that they had all of their livestock down here. Cows and chickens used to be in here. They had to keep them contained. So that means that the bricks down on the other side are older than the ones we're standing on. Those bricks at the other side are sun-dried bricks from slave children. There's a full handprint from a slave child down there in one of those bricks, along with fingerprint swipes and others. Pretty sad story. And I used to take my group all the way through 
As a history lesson, nothing paranormal. Mm -hmm. Again, I treat that brick the same way I do a grave. That's the last place you're gonna find that kid. Right, yeah. November 26th, 2020. My entire group of 10 is huddled around that brick, waiting for something to happen. Nothing's gonna happen. I'm trying to shoo them along. Come on, guys, let's go. Because it's also outside the kitchen window of the beautiful mansion at the end of the alley. I was trying to be respectful, not realizing I was out of bounds for tours. So the new owner of the mansion came out screaming. My daughter thought it was great because dad's getting yelled at. So she was on the tour that night, so it was Thanksgiving week. So the next day was Thanksgiving, I don't tour on Thanksgiving, but the next day after that was November 28th. So I called my partner that I had at the time and I told him what happened. He laughed at me just like my daughter did. Um, he's like, you're not allowed to go down before I uh, Halfway, that's the point. You're gonna have to reroute. So when I told my team that night, because again, it's Black Friday, I'm sold out again. Um, I don't believe in the next story simply because it's pirates. I'm a vampire guy. So I don't get into pirates at all. So before we left, somebody heard the name Anne on a spirit box. I didn't tell them which pirate we're going to be getting into. The famous female pirate, Anne Bonnie. I was going, okay, maybe we got something. We get up and around the corner. Somebody else heard the number 300. I don't know what that one means. I write it down. Again, I only had a day to research that. And again, wasn't a whole lot of time. So I did some research on the number 300. We were there November 28th of 2020. Anne Bonnie's trial for piracy, November 28th of 1720. Oh the exact gosh. 300 anniversary of the fire trial. Wow, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, and normally, that's the reaction that I get from you guys. I was actually pissed off. Let me tell you why. I have a master's degree in creative writing. I need, when I'm doing this, I need facts and data. Pirate stories come from pirate lore. That means I had to read a shit ton of books on pirates to make sure I was debunking all of the things that were common around the pirate stories. So half my library now is all on pirates. I'm still watching documentaries. I'm playing video games on pirates. I need different versions of the story all the time. Everything we're going to discuss came from a minimum of two resources. I try to make the story fun, and it's also a roll of the dice if she'll even be there, which is why we kind of hope for the rollover from here. Um, but again, I'll explain why it's a 50-50 roll of the dice. Dr. Ladd is always here. We're always going to find clues to him. Even if you don't get them in real time, I'll probably stumble across one or two when I'm doing the spot check. Um, so any other major questions about dueling that I might be able to answer? Well, I anything tomorrow at 8 a.m. pretty well yeah, get it like on the that. dot. I like that too. Uh, let me see what I got going on here. A whole lot of nothing. Uh, oh, we got the word pink as we are leaving the Pinkney Mansion. So I'm actually, that's actually exciting to me, believe it or not. This is me excited, everybody. I'm not a TV show host. Um, so I do like that. It's weird that we have the word value and milk over here when I just told you that this was Cow Alley. Um, so that's a, that's a stretch, but it's still there. Um, we've actually had the word meat and alley show up next to each other. <laughs> kind of funny when we walk through here. Um, if you want to... Can, on the did they, ha just did they have dairy cows here? I'm sure typically they meat. Typically if they had chickens with them, they're usually meat. Like used for meat, not dairy, but not always. Um, back then, right probably the, whatever they When can you get. said yeah. we get meat and alley together, it went meat. I also have the word kid, which also means goat. So, it may have been ghosts down here as well. It's, it's just this big stretch, and I don't know the semantics, like what you're asking. I'm, I'm not afraid to say I don't know something. Um, we have goat milk. Goat milk Maybe too. you can hear more. I can, like, it's I hard really for me to listen to that, to that, and I'm sure somebody's got on the side, somewhere. there's a knob oh, where you can turn it up and down. I figured he was going to give it a go. Yeah. Um, where so is it? On, right it's on the, the side, right above oh. the numbers. There's a wheel that yeah, turns it up and down. Yeah, don't hit the button. The button will shut it down. Yeah. Um, I know you weren't watching. Uh, go ahead and give it a Point quick three. look, see if you got anything. Point three. Okay. So again, we got these lamppost near us. I just like to make sure we have us legit. Three Springsteen. Point three, four, four. They started <laughs> playing that song. So. Okay. Well, you're going to listen right. for words. So the gate before we leave the space. Remember I told you that the alley was <laughs> all the way through? Mm-hmm. In the event there was a loser to the duel, this was the shortcut to get to the cemetery that's behind me on the other side of the wall. So otherwise they have to go all the way down to Queen Street and then double back to be able to celebrate the winner with dead weight. So again, a lot more time. The wrought iron probably wasn't there. You can see that the archway was, but the wrought iron was probably, probably probably there in the early 1900s based on you know the look of it. I don't know the exact year of it, but we had uh, an iron worker here that made a lot of the gates that you'll see here in Charleston. Charleston. I throw those away. You're listening to Charleston radio stations. <laughs> so that's an easy one. Anything with the current year or the, or the word Charleston, I throw it away. And it says Jesus a whole lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah you're in the Holy City here. Yeah. Gonna get that you're going to get Jesus. All right. Let's go learn about crazy pirates. Pirates. All right, Dr. Ladd. Uh, 
Anistree is done. So this is an Anistree. Are you guys familiar with Anistree? Yeah, it, the spice, the, is that the one that tastes like licorice you yeah. make the cookies That's actually with? what they make licorice yeah. out of, and then there's the Pitzel cookies. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is an Anistree. So when it's in bloom, like this whole alley smells like Anistree. Really? It's wonderful. And then in a different season, we get a lot of jasmine down there. Mm -hmm. So you, it's different. It's always a different scent down there. This is actually That's one cool. of my most favorite places in, in all of Charleston. It's if really you, neat. If you're a picture taker, it's I'm sad that we don't get to see the handprint. But you can't without me. <laughs> I have to make it back by. Like he, he took our, talked our ear off on the way here. Oh, you can hit that red button. Oh, okay. Hit the red uh, button. We will be spreading out once I give you the Aunt Bonnie history and kind of seeing what we got going on here. Um, we only had two cars in here, so I'm not worried about it. Um, but the reason why I point those out is because that's the first set they put in because that's the oldest government building in South Carolina. It was finished in 1713. We're here because Aunt Bonnie would recognize that building because it was being constructed at the time she was coming here to start a new one. That's why we're here. That's what I call a familiar. On your TV shows, you've seen the Boo Buddy. It's the teddy yeah. bear with the blinky light in there, right? Yeah. Um, they use that because the child would recognize it as a toy. Mm -hmm. Same concept here. Anne would recognize this building because we don't have many buildings this old. So same type of concept. The building took 10 years to build. Does that sound like our government? Small building, 10 years? I'm sorry if anybody yeah. here works for the government. <laughs> so. I actually had an FBI agent one night and it actually pissed him off that I made that crap. I'm like, dude, come on. Um, yeah, relax. I'm here to have a good time. Join reality, sir. I know, right? Um, but anyway, our history begins right in the middle of it. I will slow down on the twist because there's a handful of them, especially for our spirit box work. Um, it's kind of funny. Most of the time when teenagers have those, they don't pay attention to me at all. So when they're shouting shit out that actually makes sense, the rest of the team gets excited. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not offended when the teenagers aren't paying attention well, to see, me. See, I was trying to listen to both, and so I, oh, I couldn't deal. focus yeah, on one, talk fast. one or the other. Young lady moves here from Ireland. Her name is Anne Cormack. She comes here with her father. And I his heard mother. Anne earlier. Her father and his mistress. The mistress is Anne's mother. You guys with me so far? Okay. Interesting. Three of them running away from her father's angry wife. How pissed was she? She kicked him out of the country. There's no planes. It's 1708. It's by boat. It's a long trek. Mm -hmm. They land in Georgetown. That's between us and Myrtle Beach. So about an hour and a half north of here. Dad bought a plantation. Mom died pretty quickly. That means dad is now sending young Anne down here to Charlestown to sell things from the plantation to keep things afloat. I say Charlestown because that's what it was called back then mm -hmm. after King Charles. Um, so 1796. Like 17. What? I like 17. Yeah. I'll write that one down. Remember that number because okay. numbers are good. So I try to breeze through this one because there can be a lot here. Um, let's go back to Ireland for just a second. Anne was a badass even when she was a little girl. I remember say when she was seven, eight, nine years old. Remember it's pirate lore, nothing's mm -hmm. exact. That she killed a servant with a knife to the belly. I can't tell you how many times servant, knife, and belly have shown up on three different communication devices. The other two people don't know what's going on. It happens all the time. Fast forward. The building's done in 13, but by 1715, pirates are starting to come through Charlestown. Anne is stoked. The reason why, she's gonna fall in love with one of these guys. So she's gonna earn her freedom, just like a man, in man's world. The first guy she falls in love with. I say it that way, because there's a handful, and that's what makes the story so good. That's why we're covering it. First guy is James Bonnie. You already know where this just one's Just started going. playing Pantera. <laughs> <laughs> we got Sorry. interrupted for Pantera. Come on, Sorry. Nice. Yeah. No, we're good. I'm no, it going. said I'm here. Mm. Just <coughs> Good, hopefully she is here. He really likes that band. <laughs> Did she say Pantera Rock? What? <laughs> we all have ADD, just so you know. <laughs> it's kind of hard to hear. It keeps, like, screaming at me. Yeah, those are the yeah. things that you want. It's loud. James, Bonnie, they run away to Jamaica because Dad did not approve of a filthy pirate. So they ran away to Jamaica, got married, and Cormac became Anne Bonnie. That's where the pirate name came from. However... When she got down there, she realized her new husband is not the Captain Jack Sparrow that she was hoping for. This guy turned out to be a privateer. That makes him a spy for the British and a coward. So, she falls in love again. Guy number two, John Rackham. Everybody calls him Calico Jack. This is the guy they based your Johnny Depp character off of, in case you were wondering. This is a real guy. Um, so, he has his own ship. He has his own crew. Anne wants to be part of the crew. Can't put a female on a pirate ship. Does anybody know why? No. It's bad luck. So I try to keep it nice and simple, but I like that awkward, like, oh, shit, is he really asking us that? Why well, you can't put one woman on a ship full of... Well, it, it went dark in my head real <laughs> yeah. fast, but... I also. Do I mean, I was I like, because larger... it's one woman and a whole ship full of brandy men? Is 800 relevant at all? Not yet. Keep listening. Um, I 
do that on purpose when I have a full group to make sure everybody's still paying attention because the story is over. Um, so again, you guys did well. <laughs> it's bad luck. Yeah. He makes a deal with her. If you dress like a guy and look like the crew, you can be part of the crew. She's okay with this because dad used to cross-dress her as a boy apprentice back home in Ireland to hide her from his wife. She gets it. It's a man's world. But she's a lady in his quarters. Let's put two and two together. She's eventually going to get pregnant. He yes. can't have a pregnant pirate dude on the crew. Somebody's going to figure out she's a girl. He drops her off in Cuba before she starts to show her pregnancy and says, has a baby here. Come back later. We'll figure it out. She goes and has that baby but returns without a baby. We have no idea what happened to the child. She's also dressed like a female. This makes Jack pretty pissed off. Now, everybody's going to know he's a girl on the ship. To make him even more mad, she's going to go flirting with the pirate crew she just captured. They're down below deck. Guy number three. Guy number three turns out to be a female, dressed like a guy, to be part of the crew that Calico Jack captured. Now we have two females on the same ship trying to be pirates. Her name is Mary Reed. She went by Mark Reed to become a pirate. Mary and Anne possibly became lovers. We're not going to really know for sure, but the friends for positive, right? So the British find out where they are. <laughs> they send a whole fleet of ships to take down one measly little pirate ship. The rumor is, is that Anne and Mary were the only two pirates not drunk enough to come up with one bullet flintlocks because they don't know how to use the cannon jet. Obviously, two ladies with one bullet guns cannot take on a whole fleet of ships with cannons. They get arrested. As they're being arrested, Anne looks at her captain and beau. She says, Jack, I'm sorry to see you here, but if you would have fought like a man, you wouldn't be hanged like a dog. The word dog shows up all the time on communication devices. The judge wants to see the two quote-unquote men that fought back so violently on their own. He's already tried and hung Calico Jack and the drunk pirates that wouldn't fight. They're dead and gone. The two ladies go in front of this judge and reveal their gender, hoping to save themselves, and he does not give a shit. They are female. They're still pirates. He's still going to hang them. So they scream out, we plead our bellies, because you can't hang a pregnant woman in 1720. They're trying to save themselves again. So he sends five, sends them both back to jail, delays the hanging. Dad is still up here in South Carolina with all of his Irish money. He bails out Anne and brings her home. She remarries. That's husband number two, but guy number four. We're going to count Mary because we don't really know. She has four kids, dies at the age of 84. Wow. Very wow. abrupt because we don't know jack shit about her after her power career that I can say is a true fact. Again, it's a complete mystery. Mary Reed died five months later in that Jamaican jail from whatever pirates died from in a jail. Use your imagination. Some Most books would tell you it was fever. I say let's make it romantic and call it scurvy. Why yeah. the hell not? <laughs> so here's what I left out. I don't assign questions at this location. I just tell you a few things I left out for communication work. Um, I left out the name of Anne Bonnie's parents, the father and the mistress. I left out the name of the city where Anne grew up in Ireland. Not here, obviously. The name of the ship where Cal that she joined with Calico Jack. I left out the ship name. So those are three major things that we've been getting here more often. Um, so those are the kinds of the things that you're going to be hopefully focused on. So again, say them out loud if you want to. It's okay. okay. Either way you want to do it. Right. Um, but again, if you just want to shout things out, yeah. like you've been telling me, what was that, 1796? Is uh, that the number you Yeah, heard? 1796. And then I also heard 800, and then it said mental illness like six, seven times. At 1796 is like very specific, right? Especially from that kind of times. Um, 800 mental illness. You heard something else. You said you heard the name Anne? Yeah. Okay. Um, readings here. I'm not, I get excited about a 2.5. Wow. Good. Could have been left over from you moving it. Because again, it will pick up your motion if you're moving it quickly. Um, so. Yeah, the only reason why is because we do have two electrical poles in the corners and parking meters on the other side of those bushes. So it's usually on this back half if we get anything. Um, we have had some interaction with stick figures in here, but you're gonna keep that thing running the entire time that we're here. Okay. Um, we don't wanna do like stop and go because by the time you hit the record button, it's already gone. So okay. keep listening in. Matthew's the star of the show right now. So I haven't checked on my word list in a minute. So let me see what I got. Oh, I got the word dizzy. Is everybody feeling okay? Mm -hmm. Is the parent's uh, name James? No. No? I'm getting a figure popping in and out by that building. It will pick up. There's a lot of contour to that building. Oh. Uh. It has a lot of, like, bendy parts of the roof and little contours. There goes Matthew. The yep. <laughs> and that's what you're looking for. And I usually, even with this camera, I try to tell the user to try to keep one of us in view. So that way you have a point of reference for height. Yeah. Like, see what you're getting right now? That is, we don't have... 25 foot tall ghosts. I <laughs> so. see. Okay. The one I was watching earlier, it was, they were in a prison and one of them kept popping up on this, but he would like 
show him that he was hanging, like, and his feet would swing. Mm-hmm. And anyway, it was like that's how they would kill the people. They would hang them. And anyway, so it would, like, stand there, and then all of a sudden it kind of, like, raise up and then just do this. Didn't and, like, his feet would swing. Did you it was an Ireland show? Yeah, it's in Ireland. I watched, there was a Scotland one and an Ireland one, but I went to Ireland this last summer, and so okay. I had a, a lot of fun with all the history and stuff there. It's a lot of sports stuff. So okay. stuff Keep shouting it out. It was an art ready. retreat, but we did a whole deal on um, a Pirate Princess. I'm here. Um, I can't think of her name, but anyway, we painted the Pirate, the pirate Queen, and we went to her castle, and it was very cool. Writing in the dark is on my resume now. <laughs> Doing this every night. Sometimes I get back to the office and I'm like, what the hell is this one again? And then I gotta go to the audio. It's a very awkward short film. You wanna know the history of why it's shaped like that? You, you were talking about it being a thing that they. for earthquakes. But... Well, that's just that the cross is on there. So the, the building is shaped the way that it is because it held gunpowder for seven different wars. So it's got three foot wall, or three foot. Uh, thick walls so oh. if something gets hit from two blocks away from the water it, it's gonna have a hard time of getting through it but let's say it goes all the way through the roof is shaped that way because it's holding sand underneath the shingles oh. so that way it can blow up in the air because it's not gonna blow out the three foot oh. thick walls right. so the sand is supposed to go up in the air and then fall to put out the fire of the gunpowder it's a great idea too but that doesn't, doesn't work, work. <laughs> we had another powder magazine closer to the battery it's much closer to the water it did get hit the sand went up but the building burned to the ground Mm -hmm. now when they turned this place into a museum because that's what it is now um they had to do some repairs of course um and try to use as many as original materials as they could and realize that the sand from 1712 when they were building this place um is still there Mm -hmm. oh cool because sand doesn't disintegrate it is a very interesting roof layout and it's got a groin vaulted ceiling on the inside so there's a lot of packed sand Huh. Um, it is actually a really cool, like, $5 ticket stop if mm-hmm. you need to get out of our heat or cold, is what I tell people. I'm not an advocate for the place, but again, to learn what this place actually was, it's very interesting. Especially when you start learning about the Charlestown walls that we had, because mm-hmm. this street right here is where the wall stood. Mm-hmm. This is a wall city. What'd you get? South. South. Nope, this would be the northwest corner. Um, so, this is just on the inside of the walls the, the wall only went up to where meeting street is so that's only like one block from here mm. so again it's as far away from the water as they could possibly make it inside the original walls and that waterway that i was telling you about earlier jason is outside the walls so they barely used it for anything so those old maps really tell a big story if you really look at them properly huh it's interesting Civil War stuff happen here? Yeah. First shot. Oh, batteries. I was just telling you there was another powder magazine on the battery. It's not spelled the same, but we still have the same phonetic. I wonder, and it's, it has the word Ashley on there. So we have two Jeremiah. rivers that surround Charleston. We have the Cooper River this way and the Ashley River that way. Mm. So I wonder if that shot that destroyed the other River. one came from the Ashley River. Just Good an enough. interesting thought yeah. of how I look at these things. So I'll, I'll dive into it to see if I can find out. Cool. Anything else coming out of there? What? Anything else? Uh, I got Jeremiah and River. There's our answer. And what do you want to tell us? You might not be here tonight, but we'll take some answers from whoever's here. Is that why she was the material girl? Yep. Girls just want to have fun? Yeah. Yeah. We do get a lot of female gender style terms. She said that. Girls this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That kind of mentality. It's almost like... like, It just said money like six times. Like money, 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 money. (laughs) Over and over. It's been saying money over and over. That's funny. 